All right, this is my video on how to do a network packet, packet sniffer. Now, as you can see, this is the program running right here, and I have all these packets coming through my computer, and it's pretty much sitting idle. It's just, this is all the crazy network traffic that's going on. So, I will stop this, and I'll show you how this thing works. It's actually quite easy. Uh, Right here I have my setup, which is a combo box so I can choose my adapter to look at. Uh, a start and stop button. And I've put a filter in here if I wanted to see only a single IP address and don't care about the rest of the stuff that's going on. And then I have a data grid view where it has a from column, a to column, a type column, and a data column. So, getting down to it, first thing you got to do is uh, import some system.net and a system.net.sockets so we can use that and first thing we're going to want to do the important ticket right here sockets as a new socket uh, inter network raw and IP that's going to take any packet coming through be it TCP UDP or any other different type uh, like a datagram or something and display that and then byte data, this is uh, where we put both the headers and the data into. And then I have something for my IP address, and the rest of this is just extra stuff. That's not terribly important. Get to those later. And then uh, some stuff to update the data grid view with. So now to get really into the um, packet sniffer. First thing we need to do, and I'm going to get back to the rest of this stuff, but this is the important thing right here. The first thing we want to do is try to bind the IP address, which is associated with the network adapter, to the sockets. And first thing we want to do is choose our network adapter. So I hit the play button here, and I have an adapter with a drop down menu, and this shows all my adapters. And if I choose the wrong adapter like this, it's going to turn red and show me nothing. If I go to this one, it's actually going to grade out because now it found something that's actually usable. You can see right there it just started taking off and grabbing packets. So, upon to get the whole network adapter uh, IP address thing, I do that in a couple different programs of mine. Uh, the Poverty Distribution program, I do that in. And I forget, there's another one I stole it from, but first thing you want to do for that is get the network connections uh, from net.networkinterface as network interfaces and put them into the network connections and upon the form load uh, we're going to fill that uh, network interfaces with get all network interfaces because it's an array of network interfaces and then we're going to fill the combo box with all those uh, names of all the network connections so when you choose one, it activates this event right here and it says upon the combo box change, uh, we first need to go through the one that we selected and get all of its uh, unicast addresses. And if that unicast address, address family is a type of internetwork, then we know it's a good valid IP address and we set my IP, which is your regular adapter's IP address to that. It's a little crazy complicated, but don't worry, you can steal my code, I won't tell anybody. So that is how we bind the socket. And so then we want to set the socket option uh, at the IP level to include the header. And then this is all kind of one thing right here. Uh, buy true and buy out are kind of, if you will, uh, trues for the I.O. control, which is uh, to say receive all. And that would be then true and true, if you will. It's kind of this weird thing that I.O. control needs to see. So, no worries. And then I have blocking set for false. So it doesn't actually hold the program when it's going through and searching for packets. And then I want to redefine byte data, which was our uh, array of bytes up here at the very top under sockets. So I started at 4096, which should be well enough for most things but we want to redefine it as the sockets buffer size and then we want to start an asynchronous receive of the socket and this isn't something I do too often but I figure you wouldn't want to miss the socket coming through with some data so we'll start this asynchronous thing so every time one pops in we immediately grab it and do something with it 
So the uh, asynchronous receive starts and we basically say we well, want to put the data into byte data index of zero for the length of byte data uh, no socket flags and if when it happens go to on receive and I'll get back to that in a second and then finally combo box if it, everything is good so far because this is a try statement and if everything's good and we get no errors then we disable the combo box if we do get an error then we set the back color to red and we just not worry about it. Uh, if you are doing this and your program stops and gives you an error and says, oh, here's your error, but we, we know there's going to be an error if the socket or the, the adapter isn't correct, but it's going to tell us anyways. So if you go to debug and go to exceptions, which you may need to enable exceptions, uh, you can de-click the throw buttons here and that'll actually allow a try to actually work as it's supposed to and actually, you know, try and if it doesn't work then use this code down here uh, so now that that's covered and that's covered and let's see what would be the next pertinent thing I guess it would be on receive so upon receive uh, it requires to see this asynchronous result kind of thing I don't use it it's just required to be there um, because the data is automatically stored when it calls the begin receive uh, right here into byte data so it knows upon begin receive to throw it into byte data so there's really nothing in the async result that I care about so upon being started and started being like uh, that one push button here the start stop push button because I want to pause these things sometimes because it goes so fast if I have, say, uh, push button one click, this is my start and stop button. If started is true, then when we clicked it, that means we want to turn it off. So we change the button text back to start and turn started to false. Else it is uh, stopped or it is started, we want to stop it, whatever. It turns the button to stop and started is true. Okay, so this would be starting it and this would be stopping it. Okay, so that makes good sense. Forget what I do sometimes, it's pretty bad. Anyhow, uh, we want to set the read length because um, now we're looking at all the stuff within byte swap. Now, um, bytes, oh not byte swap, sorry, byte data. Now if I go through here and I hit play, it's going to start my program and, oh, got to choose the adapter first. Okay, and immediately we get a so uh, packet through our socket. And let's look at byte data here. Now byte data, I got 8,000 some things, but it, really most of it won't be too filled. In fact if I go past 58 here you see it's all zeros. How do I know 58? Because looking at Wikipedia I can see in the IP header uh, how big this packet will actually be and that is these two bytes right here 0 and 58. And let's see then there's some other important things in here but that comes later. So I'll stop this guy right here. So I know my read length is at 0 and 58, but unfortunately the bytes are swapped. So I've made this nice little function called byte swap, which simply takes um, it's a quick little function that receives the bytes at that index and then makes an array of two bytes, even though it says one, that's 0 and 1, so I have two bytes in there. So result 0 is bytes 1, and result 1 is bytes 0. And then I return that array uh, back. So I have this two byte array. So byte swap uh, in byte data starting at two, so it includes two and three, and returns to me the read length. And then bit converter uh, turns this swapped byte into uh, an unsigned integer of 16 bits. So now I have my read length. So that now makes sense. Source port uh, and destination port are actually uh, part of the TCP or UDP headers. IP header uh, starts from 0 and goes to, I think, 21. I'm pretty sure it's 21. Uh, you can look it up Wikipedia. And then the TCP header starts at 22 and goes to, I think, about 40-ish. Maybe it's 60-ish. Um, and the UDP header is only like um, 8 bytes long, so it's much shorter. But both of them, at the same point, have the source port uh, at 22 and the destination port at 24 and so I do the same thing throw those through byte swap and I have my source port and destination port so also included in that IP um, 
header is the type TCP UDP and there's like probably I think four or five others uh, but I really only care about TCP and UDP that's the major players anyhow uh, so byte 9 tells me if it's a 6 it's a TCP it's a 17 it's a UDP if it's anything else I really don't care just show me data and let's see uh, now head, held within the IP header since it's less than 21 at 12 and 16 uh, for four bytes a piece I have the IP it's going from the IP it's going to so uh, I don't need to use uh, byte swap on these guys they're just kind of automatically done for me so moving along um, I've seen packets from my computer to itself which doesn't make too much sense so I've set up some other things here if uh, IP from equals my own IP uh, or uh, IP2 equals my own IP then you know forget about it let's see and uh, IP equal oh and if IP2 equals IP from then also forget about it we don't you know don't care at that point because you know it's just going to myself I want to see something that's going across the network and not just to myself so and then I have my filter built in right here too this is the filter piece uh, if my filter is turned off, then don't worry about it. Or if it's on and um, the filter address that I've chosen equals either from or to, then continue on. So the filter was pretty easy to create. The filter says, um, where did I put my filter? I lost my filter. <laughs> it was the text box. Here we go, text box. I went right past it. Anyhow, uh, we have a try statement around here because we're going to try to parse out an IP address, and if it doesn't work, we don't want it. We just want to, you know, catch and not worry about it. So if the text box does not equal nothing, and the text box is not nothing because it can equal null sometimes, then we want to try to set the IP address uh, as an IP address parse text box text, and try that. If it works, then I we're going to turn on the filter and we're going to color that box green uh, if it is either you know text is nothing or is not nothing then we come down here to else we're going to turn off filter and we're going to turn the back color back to white uh, in case there was something but it wasn't valid then that's the same thing down here turn off the filter and color it back white again so there's that so pretty simple enough all right, so fixed data. I have here something that just makes sure that uh, since there's a lot of bytes flowing around and not all of them are actually meaning something in a kind of ASCII kind of format, I want to make sure you see the ASCII ones but then not worry about the other ones because sometimes the other ones will be like a carriage return and you know the uh, data grid view won't know what to do with that and just cut it off right there. So um, I have a string here and for the length starting at the uh, start of the data and going to the read length and read length oh yeah so that was it turned over up here by the IP header going through that I turn um, if it is a letter or digit then I put it into my string if it is not I just simply make it a period simple enough and then finally I put it into my data grid view since my since this is an asynchronous receive it is upon a different thread than the data grid view is originally made of um, so what you have to do with that is call an invoke statement and what the invoke statement just basically does is uh, data grid view invoke uh, the DGV update and so that DGV update is just a name I made and made a private sub so what this allows me to do is it allows me to access the DGV upon this invoke right here. So, uh, first thing I do though is if there's more than 50 lines already in the data grid view then just start removing it at the top of the list or the first one that was there just remove it because you know I don't want to overdo this data grid view and as I'm watching or as I go leave to get some Mountain Dew or something I don't want this thing to overrun and you know crash my computer which I've done that enough. So anyhow once we've removed any extra rows that aren't needed I add a row and then I have the data grid view uh, to the row of the last row uh, first cell 0 which cell 0 would be referring to column 0 my from 
uh, dot value equal IP from to string, then colon, then source port. Oops, I didn't mean to drag that. And that that puts the IP that's coming from and that port into that data grid view column. And then similarly, I have my IP2 with its destination port in the next one. And then types, which was determined up here uh, to get the protocol type, uh, TCP, UDP, or question mark, and puts that in there. And then strings, which was determined up here, uh, it's put into the uh, data section. Now, all of these are actually defined up here, as I referenced earlier, up in here. Strings, types, IP from, to, destination port, and source port. Because I want to put all those in a global variable uh, instead of a kind of local variable like this. Because if I define read length in here, read length isn't going to be seeable in this sub or this sub. It's only available in this subsection right here. And so by putting it into global here, then thread no longer matters, and then I can pull that in this uh, primary thread uh, to use it into the DGV. So there we are. That's the DGV invoke. And that's pretty much the basics of it. The rest of this stuff is, um, oh yeah, it's for, it's for sizing the, the form. So if I have, say, a lot of stuff here, and my data grid view, you can see, kind of follows me as I resize this thing, because I didn't want to... Uh, I wanted, as I move this thing around or expand it to full screen, I didn't want it to uh, shrink or leave the DGV as it was, all small and whatnot. So what I did was I made a, let's see, size difference. Now the size difference between the data grid view and myself being the form, I put that into size difference as a size. And then when the form is resized, and the form is loaded because actually it'll call resize before it actually calls form load, which is odd. So I have to make sure that this portion has happened before it tries to do this. So once form loaded, which is set immediately after I get my difference here, I set the data grid view size to the size of the form minus the difference that it was originally at. So that was just something. I couldn't use a fill command because the fill command would have either filled up the entire form and which would have over you know gone over this stuff up here and I couldn't none of the other fill commands actually would have uh, worked with this because it doesn't actually resize in the function that I kinda wanted and just one more thing I wanted to show you guys um, right here this is my poverty distribution program I have a video on that guy too and I wanted to show you uh, right here I'll hit stop but uh, 192.168.0.106 starting at packet uh, 10,100 is actually something I programmed into Poverty Server Distribute to go over the multicast address 293.80.8.5 and uh, say I'm here, I'm here, and this is the packet that I actually wrote by hand to say what to do. So PVD, Poverty Distribute, and actually the dots between here are actually um, percentage signs. So if you wanted to, you can actually add, you know, if character or digit or symbol, and then it would probably show the symbol here instead. Um, but power distribute multicast server dot, then here's my computer name, Wix L7206, and then it's giving out the first two ports that it wants to use for the first client that subscribes. So this is all something I did on a previous program showing up here on my um, packet sniffer. So that's really cool. Now I'm sure you can think of other uses for a packet sniffing program and if you do, good for you. I'm sure you can have fun with that. Bye!